Um, can you all hear me okay? Okay, great. Um, yeah, so we're just going to start this panel. Um, I'm just going to ask you guys to introduce yourselves. I don't know what that was. Um, and a little bit like about yourself. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. So like a couple of minutes each. Do you want to start us off? Okay, I can start. I am young. I am PhD student in Edinburgh Napier University. And I graduated mechatronical engineering in 2017. Then I started a local smartphone company. I worked there uh, two years as an R&D engineer. Then I started a telecommunication company. And I worked there 5G R&D engineer in around one year. And in there, I work on international projects like Horizon, Celtex, Next, ITA. After that, I start my master in some technical university. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. Hi, my name is Tess Watt. I'm also a PhD student here at Edinburgh Napier University. And I'm working in AI, specifically for the diagnosis of skin diseases. Um, I graduated from my bachelor's degree here last year as well. Um, I also founded my own company, Techie Tessie, which helps international students learn how to program in their own language. Um, hello, everybody. This is Kubra. Uh, I am also from uh, Edinburgh Napier University, and I'm a PhD student. Uh, my current thesis is about the digital domain technology and the Internet of Things applications. Uh, before attending the Napier, I was doing my PhD at the Istanbul Technical University. And back in my master's, I was dealing with some communication technologies. And thank you. Uh, hi, I'm Amy. Um, I graduated last year from Napier doing games development and I now work at Quorum Cyber. Okay, thank you. Um, so basically what we're going to do is we're going to do a couple questions from me and Alice and then we're going to kind of open it up to the audience. Um, I know that there's people at the back so you might have to shout quite loud. Um, but yes, yeah, so firstly, like, what kind of got you first interested in tech? What sparked that? Any guesses? <laughs> Um, I suppose for me, um, I was very lucky in that in high school I had two really amazing female um, computing teachers. Um, and so I was originally going to go down into the arts route and it was mainly because of them that I went into the computing and science route. And then once I started computing at university, I wasn't quite sure what area of computing I wanted to go into until my third year when I took a AI module and then it really just clicked for me from there. Um, I think for me it was one of the few things I was good at <laughs> um, uh, and I think if you've got an interest in the field then um, it's something that you could um, then learn more about and then possibly um, make your career out of that. And uh, for this question, also I was a kind of um, a chances uh, people. Uh, one of my uh, relatives are working on the industry, so that's why I had the chance to see the, the experiences in the industry from the technological perspective at the first hand. So that's why I have decided to make my choices when I am starting my university. And, and my, my tech interest uh, started uh, in this way. Okay, for me, uh, as I mentioned, I graduated mechatronical engineering and in uh, my graduation time, I was with drones and that kind of devices using some programming language. And it's always attractive to see how um, your created things work. And after that, uh, I work on some AI algorithms. And as you know, technology is always changing and it's too dynamic and keeping up with uh, that things always um, attractive. I think this is the main reason. Yeah. Um, well, do you have a memorable project or experience that has stood out to you in your career? Um, I can mention about one of them. Um, actually, in my first experience in the industry, I was working on an um, industrial company, and there we were developing some automation solutions. So, so I was entering to the physical environment um, on, on the factory, so that was a kind of uh, physical challenge for me, uh, by the way. And actually, for one of my projects, um, I slept uh, over, the, uh, over the factory and worked really uh, for hard, hard hours. And after that, after uh, one month, the, the, uh, the making my project possible, 
um, I got uh, I got some job offer from the industry. So and after that time, I feel like that uh, you are always seeing such kind of um, good results uh, after your, your your performances. So that's the thing that motivated me always in academia in the industry. Okay, I can give an example for more academic sites. It will be great, I think. Uh, in my master's degree time, my professor uh, has had a, a common project with University of York. It was a Royal Society project, and I work in that project, and we was working on air, uh, intelligent air quality monitoring system. And uh, we wrote a paper together, and this paper accepted from IEEE conference, which held in, uh, in Rio, which is one of the um, big conferences. It's called Globcom. And I went there, it was a really great experience. It was my first in-person conference. And uh, you guys, I recommend this kind of conference. It's because it's really good opportunity to interact with other people, especially industry, because uh, the people who work in industry and the technology company also come in this kind of conference and you can interact with them and you can learn their problem and you can um, develop some solution to their problem and you can work uh, with them together. And you can also interact with the um, students in your level as a, in globally, it's also a great experience. Yeah. I think for me, um, when I was at uni, I, um, in my third year, I chose to do um, a placement. And it was something that gave me a taster like within a corporate environment. And it also gave me quite a few skills that I now use in my job in Quorum now. Um, so that really stood out to me. And I would recommend any students that are thinking about doing it now to apply for placements. And that's a really good point about placements, um, because I also did two internships. And I was the complete opposite. I realized that the corporate environment just wasn't for me. But I would still recommend it. Um, I would recommend just really trying to get you know, your toe into each you know, facet of the industry as early as possible. So then you can really you know, figure out what lane is right for you. Thank you. Yeah. OK, so we're kind of going to open up to any questions here. Um, they can be like as broad as you want, as specific as you want. can be to a specific person. But yeah, would anyone like to do the first question? Okay, so I'm just going to repeat it out um, for anyone that didn't hear and anyone out there. Um, so basically, like, in any like career, any environment in the tech industry, like have you ever um, felt that you've been in a place that has like um, been traditionally male and like faced those stereotypes? Yeah. And kind of what like did you do about that reality? Uh, I can take this one if you want. Um, when I worked in industry, I had that exact experience because I wasn't one of the lads and I didn't you know go to the pub after work and such. Um, whenever um, me and my male colleague would give presentations together, his questions would always be sort of more about, you know, his personality, you know, his hobbies and things like that, whereas I'd get the really heavy technical questions, which was really unfair. And so basically what I did about that was speak to my manager um, and, you know, he spoke to, you know, the individuals who were, you know, asking the questions and such but there is sort of this like culture of you know if you don't you know hang out with the lads and go to the pub after work you, that you are sort of like missing out on sort of the community of your you know workplace so I think you know as unfortunate as it is it's you know an experience that sometimes you will have to just endeavor and navigate um but yeah <laughs> I think just on top of that, sometimes you can like you can flip the side and use it as a positive. Um, it it can give you that edge and it can make you stand out more if you put yourself forward and say that you do face these difficulties and this is how you overcome them. Um, I also, I would like to add something. Um, in my first job um, in the automation company. Actually, I was the only female being in the developer um, group. 
And actually, before applying this one, I have think about it. Uh, the, 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 some physical conditions because you have to give support uh, 24 hours to the factory if there is any any maintenance issue, or, etc. But I feel like that before I took the undergrad course for the programmable logic controllers, and I decided that I have to do. I would like to make this uh, job. And, and I don't ever know without uh, experiencing, without trying it. But uh, at the end, uh, yes, the, the some physical uh, conditions was really hard. But I have never, um, I have never, I am really uh, happy to decide it and seeing the experience at, at the first hand. Uh, you will never know before uh, trying it. Actually, I also experienced the same thing in my uh, first company. Uh, I don't answer the all details, but uh, I can say, if you think the people in that company, especially this kind of things happen in boss based company, not corporation-based ones, if you think they are not changed, uh, they are straightforward, you just uh, need to change your environment. You just need to set out, uh, set out your comfort zone to expand more. Thank you. Does anybody else have any questions? Right. Yeah. Yeah. So, amongst yourselves or your peers or you know even your friends in different industries, um, have you ever seen that when you or someone else is meant to apply for a job, looking at a job description, obviously for everyone can be quite intimidating. But I was recently speaking to some some other women in tech, and they were saying that they always think that they don't meet all the criteria. But I found from experience that when I interview you know anyone, there's often people who don't meet the criteria. But the women were saying that they don't feel as comfortable to apply for the job. So um, they're basically asking, like, um, when you uh, are applying for a job or like a placement or anything like this, um, do you find that like if you don't meet all the criteria, you're kind of hesitant to um, apply? Um, and if you are aware of that, like being a gendered aspect. Um, and finally, they were asking, like, what do you think can be done about that? Actually, firstly, don't be afraid that. Just apply and go interview. And generally, the people who in the interview, they are. Uh, Indeed, looking your um, patience. You really want to that job, or you have expectation more than just salary. They are generally looking that thing. For example, in my second company, um, entering this company, it it was not easy, and I didn't meet the 5G or in the engineer criteria. But uh, they said after uh, I got that job, I talked with the interviewer guy, and he said I saw your patience about the, these things and. You are um, thinking more than just money, and I just recommend just go and try. At least you say you can say I tried, and you always explain something in interview. Um, I think uh, it depends on the situation sometimes because some companies are really searching for uh, the, the some emergent roles in their companies. Um, but um, I can uh, say that at this point, the companies more would like to uh, measure your skills, for example, uh, depending on the position. They would like, for example, see how you are skilled to uh, solving the problems creatively. Even though there are some lists, some programming languages, some, some tools, and etc. Uh, as far as you are able to make some uh, creative things, you will be able to learn uh, different languages. So do not hesitate to apply uh, such kinds of uh, applications, I, I think. I, I propose this. Thank you. Um, I think it's a lot of the time it's more, um, if you only tick a few of the boxes, you also have to um, convey within the interview like your willingness to learn um, because these things can always be taught. If you only know a few of the boxes, then you can you can always add to your, your skill set. Um, and I think that's what people have got to remember when they're applying for jobs. Great, thank you. Any other questions? Um, up there.
That's a really good point, and I think this event's a great place to start. I mean, like, I met um, Yammer and Kubra through doing my PhD, um, because there aren't many of us women doing PhDs, especially at Napier. There's only, you know, a few female lecturers as well. Um, so it's really important, you know, if you're, you know, enjoying your degree and, you know, if you're, you know, very interested in the field, I'd highly, you know, recommend considering further education. We need you here. And, you know, with, you know, getting all of these qualifications, you know, it'll help you, you know, rise to a leadership level, which will help, you know, inspire, you know, more of us here. I think just to add on that, don't be afraid to start up your own community. Like, people, there'll be several people that are in the same position as you, thinking the same things. But if you go ahead and like make that starting point, people will come to you and then you can build your own basis. Actually, I want to add um, a point. IEEE has Women in Engineering Community and I recommend you can involve that community, be a volunteer. Me and Kubra also volunteer in Women in Engineering uh, UK and Ireland section. And they have uh, some organization and they have monthly meeting and you can meet many uh, women in engineering and you can learn many things thanks to them. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think the making the networks, the networking is a kind of really good, uh, important part uh, in our job. Uh, I, um, I recommend you to uh, search for some technical festivals uh, within the UK, within the Edinburgh, and try to attend as much as uh, possible to them. Um, for example, last year, uh, we attend the census, uh, which is a kind of the industrial uh, platform uh, in Glasgow, and there were lots of uh, companies that and they were searching for some fresh brains. So these are really good chances for you uh, to attend these uh, events, these festivals, to, to meet more people, to, and it will make it easy for you to find uh, different jobs according to your um, results. Yeah, I just want to, like, um, I know I'm hosting, but I just want to say, like, I'm sure, like, for myself and I'm sure the panellists, like, are super happy to, like, kind of talk to you about, like, who they've found and, like, the resources that, like, can in more depth. I, can I also add on, actually? I know we're meant to be hosting, but <laughs> it really is just speaking about the things you've went through and just finding people that have been through similar things and they just help you. You just form a community in the end and help everybody else out, really. I'd like yeah. to think NUSIC does that quite as well. <laughs> Of course. Okay. What would you recommend for your AMAP students to do to support AFAB people that are going into the industry? Um, so that was just um, like, what would you recommend for AMAB people to support um, AFAB people? Just in case anyone doesn't know, AMAB is like assigned male at birth and AFAB is assigned female at birth. Um, so yeah, like what would you kind of um, recommend for men and AMAB people to do to support like the community of women and a AFAB? Um, so for job, we, job interview or to get, I didn't understand the question. Um, so just like um, what can men do in the industry and in like um, PhDs and uh, like just in this community that exists in the industry, what can they do to kind of support um, like AFABs and women and any gender minorities? Okay, actually there are many scholarship uh, opportunities if we think about the money base and uh, people can easily apply that scholarship opportunities. Of course, you need to uh, search about a, a scholarship. For example, British Council has many, Royal Society has many. You need to check the correct category for scholarship. And uh, uh, IEEE also has young professional um, organization and women, men, or any uh, diversity can easily apply to this community and they also organizing many e events just for community engagement and to just meet people in both in industry and academy to develop their um, interaction. And uh, I also recommend involving or volunteering in young professional and UK and Ireland sec section also has their own community. And you just uh, can search or send an email to us and we can easily uh, contact the right person with you and them. Uh, yeah, I think the volunteering um, is the, another uh, important thing uh, as your career uh, to, to, to start a, a, a good one. 
And for this one, it doesn't matter which role you are taking. It, it can be a kind of technical or it can be a kind of an organizing committee or etc. So you are developing your skills in every aspect. So try to be volunteer in, in every stages. Um, for instance, uh, I have met a, one woman from the ST Microelectronics and they are making some, uh, some tech events and she was searching for some students to be volunteers in the making some, um, some um, technical sessions, for example on the some microchips and etc uh, so uh, I recommend you to search for such kind of the volunteering in every aspects and you will you will gain lots of experience um, I believe okay great um, so we've got time for one more question if anyone has one yeah yeah Um, so that's just um, like, has anyone, has anyone here like experienced when you've like been put into a group like with other women and kind of like, <clears throat> oh, we've solved the problem rather than like actually addressing like the discrimination and the barriers that you face like in the industry? Um, I've never even been put in that situation because there's just simply not enough women to even put in that situation. Um, <laughs> so I think that sort of answers your question in itself. There's not even enough women to make a sort of full-fledged team of women at the minute. <laughs> I know we're hosting, but can I also add on a point to that, really? Even if it's a, not usually enough of us to form a team, but on occasions where there's been just minimal, like two or three of us put together, it's usually just the disrespect of the way things are addressed. It's not necessarily intentional, and it doesn't happen very often. It's usually, it is definitely improving, I will say, but if only there were more women would be the only point I, unfortunately, have there. So we're just going to finish up there. Would anyone like to like, kind of give any insights like, into your um, career and your journey so far that you want to share with the... I would say that like, um, uni isn't always the way to go. Like, um, if you're currently a student and you're not enjoying it, don't think that you have to carry on. Or if you really like it, go all the way. It's up to you. Um, but there is options out there to go different paths and don't think just because you've not gone the same path as everyone else that you're not going to get the same opportunities. If anything, it gives you more opportunities because you have that edge that gives you the difference. Um. I recommend you that um, you, you uh, of course, you will set a goal uh, for, for your profession, uh, but while uh, trying to reach your goal, uh, please try to enjoy, uh, because when you reach your goal, you will, uh, you, you will feel uh, like that, uh, okay, you gain something really most important experiences, but when you reach goal, being happy and being comfortable with it, the, the most important thing, um, uh, try to explore as much as possible that you can. Actually, I want to uh, say something in a different aspect. If everything is goes smoothly in your life and um, you feel everything is wrong, don't about, I think you have to push yourself. You have to um, set out your comfort zone. And I am sure all of you is uh, has more ability than you think. And uh, if you don't set out yourself your comfort zone, you can't uh, see that thing. So you should do definitely that. And in the open day in our university, I realized that our uh, students doesn't aware of the PhD opportunities in our university. After graduation, you can directly start your PhD without master. And uh, university and uh, some UK um, organization ha has many scholarship opportunities and you you can check them and our professors and lecturers also has their own project and uh, 
in their project, they also has a PhD, uh, PhD opportunity, uh, can fund it through that projects, and you can just talk to them, and you can apply their project, and you can start your PhD. I just want to add these things. Thank you. Um, thank you. Sorry, do you want to say? Um, so, yeah, that's all the time we have for. If we could give a massive round of applause to our panel.